Taylor. No. Bad, bad, bad day. Bad end of the week, that is, mate. If no. I had some electrical tape, you could do another jack. I could, yeah, I could uh, jack number. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, part three of our um, adventure to the Open Championship. Yes. 151st Open Championship to Hoylake. Um, we are actually on our way back to Cornwall now. We are slowly, well, gradually getting down the M5. Yeah, we're gradually making our way to way Exeter now. Yeah. Um, so we thought we would do a little review video. Um, hopefully by now you will have seen the Q&A video that we did on the way up. You will have seen um, something that I ha managed to hash together because of all the other bits and pieces that we tried to film. Um, but we thought we'd do an actual review video as we're, it's kind of fresh in our minds. Yeah. Neil Wreck has got some questions for me as I'm, the, as I'm a, a newbie, I'm a virgin open well, championship so yeah, you, um, viewer, spectator. Lost, lost your live golf event cherry. So I know, I lost the cherry. Um, and also lost the army glasses. Yeah. I know. Right. I don't have no That's another story. <laughs> That's another story. Right, so okay. Alright, we've, we've arrived, we're at the camp and we checked in, we're going there to watch the practice day. Okay, so we're not discussing the camping village first, we're going straight into the actual... We'll go into the actual, day. yeah. We'll get right. into the main bit. Okay. So what are your first impressions that you walk in, you've got those big entrance, security oh. check-ins, Okay, well we went, um, we went on the practice day first, didn't we? So, yeah. it wasn't as shocking as, as, the, as the next day, which is the championship day, which yeah. is totally different, yeah? A totally different experience. Totally different. Yeah. But, I will say, amazing organisation. Yeah. Like, cause you, you said before, and I wondered why we didn't have all our tickets printed on paper, and it was so much easier to take paper with you. Everyone had to have the app, everyone had all their tickets built onto the apps, with a QR code, literally, wasn't it? Yeah. And they just scanned everything as it went by, and it was just it took seconds. It's, it? it's seamless. I mean, the old days, you, you have your ticket, they'd look at it, they'd tear off half of it, give it back, and it's literally beat done. Go through. It, it, it was it was fantastic. I said fantastically seamless. They were all really friendly. Um, you put your bag through the system because yeah. obviously they're a bit worried about security, especially with lots of um, oil people and whatever and anti-oil yeah. people at the moment. So, um, but I will say it was it was fantastically quick and smooth and everybody I guess it's a whole general for the whole the whole time we were there yeah. everybody from the security people on the um, site for the camping yeah. right through to the people who were on the little buses to the to the security people letting us through with tickets to all the food people everyone has been amazing and friendly and polite and just want to chat to you about stuff. That's it, every, Not just about golf but every, asking questions and then hello. Every volunteer I mean as you're walking yeah. From the camping village to the course, you're passing numerous volunteers and, and stewards, and they're all a lot like, of them are oh, very well dressed. It's yeah. a beautiful boss clothing, I believe, oh, yeah. um, which would have cost a lot of money. But um, hopefully, they got that for free because well, they deserve it. Yeah, they're, they're working I very they hard. Yeah, they, the infrastructure is fantastic. Because I, I said to you when we when we parked up at the park and ride, we got the little mini bus. It probably took about 15 minutes to get from there yeah, through the through the town. About 15 minutes. Yeah, um, it was. I said, well, why couldn't Salton or something do this because we've always said that Salton has a problem with infrastructure. I'm thinking, yeah. well, this place is, is rammed with houses and small roads and everything. That's so it. they seem to manage to do it. They do, but I say they've got the facilities there. I mean, the camping village that we stayed on was on the old Hoylake Municipal Course. I'm not yeah. sure if it's still or going to be going back to be in a golf course after the event's gone. They've um, got the train track, which literally comes in by the front and the entrance. Yeah, you've got, say, your train station, which is literally what probably about 600 yards from the entrance to the course or the yep. entrance where you're going um, yeah it's just it's just so well thought out and the practice range is a slightly different area to the course yeah it's it's not on the actual course itself I, no. I know I watched something was it from was it bigger HQ or something the people that the, the people that yeah. run all the kind of greenkeepering stuff yeah I call it greenkeepering stuff um, and they were saying that for the last numerous amount of months they've been working on the practice area which is a totally different area to the yeah. actual course itself it's not even part of their place um, and they've done a fine job too yeah. so we went up to the practice area first on, on the practice on the practice day um, remember we had we had no special passes yeah, we, we bumped into Lester Barnes yeah. we bumped into Dan Hendrickson and um, I saw Seb Carmichael Brown and a few other um, influencers yeah some less influenced than others, I won't mention them, I've mentioned the good ones I like, but some are less than others, but hey, you know, hey ho. Um, and they all had 
mostly had passes to get to various areas which allowed them to get closer to the action than we did. Yeah, we, we basically had the ticket that you buy yeah, we bought on the, the internet. I mean, we, we, yeah, we, we, bought we, bought we bought our bought tickets, we bought our tickets for the campsite, um, uh, everything. We didn't get any discounted anything at all. But on the practice range, you're behind a barrier, obviously, so you can't get in too close. But, I mean, we were chatting to Leicester and he's literally walking within footsteps yeah. of the players hitting balls. And, um, you know, that's quite a special thing to be doing. For, for a, a spectator point of view, they did have a grandstand behind yeah. um, the players. We kind of, because we didn't go on the grandstand bit, we kind of walked onto the right hand side where uh, Sky Sports were setting up their um, filming Yeah, they were area. setting up there, was it Swing Zone or the Open Zone? Yeah, they've they got a lot of different zone called, named, haven't they? So that was quite interesting yeah. for us to see the fancy cameras and how real people do it. Yeah. Um, but because we were still on the end, we only really saw two or three players. Yeah, we saw, I mean, you could see sort of John Rahm, he was at the far end of the, the range and it felt to me like the like the what the big name players I'd say like yeah. the Rams of this world were at the far end yeah. where they're already going to be seen by people on part of the grandstand and the rest of us or all there in the edges we're yeah. going to be there to kind of interfere they, they like to be a little bit more secluded so they can just work on their game work yeah. on what they need to fair do enough they're in, in the business too much distraction yeah so um, we, we stayed there for probably about 45 minutes yeah about 45 watching, minutes watching them hit balls and um, that was very nice I, I will say for anyone who's never actually been to a golf tournament, if you have problems with eyesight, make sure you take your long range glasses. Because um, I didn't have my long glasses on me and I lost sight of the ball very quickly. Yeah. And obviously because you're quite away from the players, certainly on practice, you wouldn't necessarily recognise who some of them are. You know, we're talking 70, 80, 100 yards to some yeah. of them, spot yeah. who they are. But, but I worked around that and that's fine. Um, so. That was all very good. Yeah, that was really all lovely. Really good fun. And uh, again, very good helpers, etc. Guiding us around where we had to go to the ticket area, um, to the main place. When you go for that, when you go through that entrance to the actual ground, it's just I almost felt like crying, mate. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit like Cody Grail, isn't it? To it's, some people, it's that thing. It's the big blue and white sort of setup they've got there. It's got the, the open logo, welcome, and oh, it's just. It gets you going a bit, doesn't it? It must have taken them months to build. Because there, there are some areas which are for, um, let's say, premier paid tickets. And I don't even know what they cost for some of their, no. their tickets. Um, but I did start looking at some of the prices and they went up to thousands and I thought I wouldn't bother to look. Um, but there was like three or four storey buildings. Yeah, I think Solid the, buildings built. The hospitality there. infrastructure. Hospitality uh, infrastructure is amazing. Uh, they've been working on that for, what we'll say, months. Yeah, um, yeah. if you're an open fan, and if, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really controversial here and go, uh, you're a stereotypical, maybe white, but certainly middle class, upper class, golf aficionado, yeah. all in your full boss gear and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and, you're, and you're quite happy to pay your loads and loads of extra money for all, we all sing and all dance in fancy ticket, good luck to you, yeah, yeah? But, but we had a great time on the cheap, well, yeah. on the whatever normal ticket, um, and we still had a good time, but it would have been fancy, fancy to, great to go into actually to see what it looked like in that building. I mean, you, you, if you've watched it on TV, you'll see all the hospitality tents there, and the size of something. You have no idea of the size, it's, really. It's a mad, so say one, I think it was up along the 16th fairway it was let's say a four or five story yeah. infrastructure they've built the shop the, the actual open shop is is, is breathtaking yeah it's, I, it's like walking into a massive asteroid um, I, I saw a video the night before actually because I'm um, I've linked up with someone on LinkedIn and other social media of one of the gentlemen who looks after the procurement of all the items in all the merchandise for them and he put a video on where they put they flew a drone through the front door through all the corridors, through all the um, active displays, through the st shop and store, they could do it because, quite frankly, it was huge. Yes, and, and there was staff in there, really friendly, helpful. Yeah. And they literally were just had handfuls of stock, putting it back on the shelf. Yeah. And it kept refilling stock. The quicker they're putting it out, the quicker it's coming off. And now I'm not saying it's all. Uh, well, I think the quality is pretty good on everything, but you could have spent an absolute fortune in there in a blink of an eye. You could have done that. You had to kind of be restrained. There were people in there who you were. could see that were spending a fortune. We, we a noticed lot. a few that come out literally dressed top to tail yeah. and a whole brand new set of stuff with all the open on it, didn't we? I mean, there's um, 
just so Americans in there and they had a basket and it was absolutely overflowing. But then for them, they've got the ability to say to use a UPS delivery service. Yeah, and that was a fantastic idea. Um, I've actually got some details of that which I put up on the other video. I hope you've seen that. Uh, you, they've got the UPS. Yeah, you, you right go there. in, you pay for your things. They prefer you to use MasterCard because that's the, the sponsor of yeah. one of the sponsors of the open. So you pay for your bits, you then walk out of the shop, turn left, and you've got a UPS packaging area. Package up your parcel and send it home so you don't have to worry about it on the, the you plane. You carry it around. Back. Also, a big store area, storage area if you were, didn't want to actually have it delivered anywhere but you want, left it there and you pick it up on the way out. Yeah, it's so, absolutely. Again, so they really think of everything. Yeah, they really do. I, I couldn't think of anything different that would make it any better. And I'm probably pretty good at coming up with the odd wacky idea. But they, they really ticked all the boxes for it. So, I will say the other thing which I didn't know, and this might not be correct, because sometimes we were kind of guessing things. The whole event was sponsored by MasterCard, who must be paying a lot of money well, for it. Well, they are one of the, the, they the are premier major sponsors. Finances. So... As far as I could see, we couldn't use cash anywhere. No. I took a chunk, took a cash with me, some coins and whatever as well. Every time you tried to buy a drink, pay my MasterCard sir. Every time you went in the shop, in the, the open shop to buy stuff, I bought a teddy bear, by the way. Of course I did. I collect teddy bears. Um, they didn't take cash at all. It was only take MasterCard. It was all MasterCard stuff. Well, it's, it's, so, we're getting towards a cashless society now. But yeah, that, it that's literally was a cashless society. I can understand it because of security, the, the amount of people there. Yeah. I mean, you can see how much money they're be getting through. So the, the first day we were there, which was the Tuesday, no, sorry, the first day we went in was the Wednesday. We got there Tuesday yeah. night. So I guess there was probably about 15,000 people there probably for that. Yeah. And then the championship day was 40,000 plus. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll go well, back to, yeah, to, okay. to walking in the entrance. Yeah. So we've, walked in, that. we've gone through security. you know, now standing on Royal Liverpool property. Yeah. As you walk in, straight in front of you, you can see the outside of the 18th grandstand, yep. and it's it's just massive. Yeah, the, the, well, the 18th grandstand is big. For it's, some reason, it's, it's one of the bigger grandstands of all of it. We created like a big amphitheatre. Yeah, there's right? a very tall one which you didn't get up because no, I found out that you were not, not, not the best with heights. But um, um, yeah. but again, they all seem exceptionally stable, which is a, something you don't always get with temporary stands. No, no. I'm certainly going to some football grounds I've been over the years. But the, the, the attention to detail and everything, even, even to the point that when you, you buy something to eat and you sit at the benches, and there's quite a few benches, quite a lot of seating around, yeah. they probably could do with more, but that you know that's very difficult to arrange. Every bench had it burnt into them the open on them, yeah. so you, you couldn't even steal the bench if you had it. <laughs> if it was humanly possible, because it was, it was logoed. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of mind-boggling, yeah. because because we, you know, we've been to some really good golf courses and some top quality championship courses, but you don't see them with all that all that extra infrastructure. No. That. I, I said to Neil when we kind of went in, a friend of mine, one of my ex-models. Um, her brother we used to work for Renault for the Grand Prix people driving those big trucks in the same way that we saw all the big trucks there for all the fittings yeah. of all the different um, club manufacturers and they would bring in all the all, it's, it's just like a Grand Prix they would bring in all the the offices and all the yeah. design stuff like that they would bring in all the stands they're bringing in all the hospitality and it's I'm not saying it's a once in a lifetime experience because I think if, you, if you're careful with your money, you can go quite often. Yeah, and you can vary where you go as well. Yeah. It's not like the British Grand Prix, once you've been to Silverstone, you've been to Silverstone. There's, there's, what's it? Because they're all kind of different. The yeah, there's different so many horses often. on the rover that they use. I mean, I've been to Litham and St Andrews, and they're all different. They've all got their own little quirks. Yeah. I think one thing is when you walk in there and you're walking around, and you just look at the quality of the turf. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's, it's out of this world. You, you're walking as a, a spectator. You're walking on parts of parts of the area that are grass that are tees for the, the members when it's you know used as a normal course, and that's cut better than a lot of courses fairways. Yeah. Obviously. Well, obviously they've got special paths where you, you get allowed through. And you can walk across various fairways to get to other parts of the course, um, and they they organise that very well as well. Yeah. 
But you're looking at those fairways and they are pristine, aren't they? And we just did St. Bellion, obviously, on the videos. Yeah. And they were the best fairways and greens I've seen for a serious amount of time. And they're obviously they're getting ready for their own big event yeah. um, in a couple of weeks' time. I'm being a, a challenger, tour one, yeah? So you can see how the quality that top players play on every day of the week is never like we're going to no, play I mean, on. The, the way that you can see some of the runoff areas were cut, there's, there's the lie is so tight. Yeah. You, it make your knees knock, you know. It's it's not like some clubs where you've got a bit of fluffy grass around the green. It's it's mowed, it's shaved, it's, yeah, it's a tight lie. And you the, can understand that the guys have got that quality of game. What, what I found fascinating shots. about the practice day is obviously we don't, I don't really get a chance to see these sort of things. I don't I have Sky Sports, I don't really have a TV, so I don't get a chance to watch a lot of those um, behind the scenes type of things uh, that go on with that. But when they're, when they're actually going around a practice round, they don't really aim for the hole when they get on the green because, they, because their, their caddies put down little markers. Yeah. And they all have a little go at putting to different areas where they're kind of guessing where the flags are going to be over four days. Yeah, they've all got a hole size little disc. Yeah three or four of them and they'll just throw them to different places where they reckon the pins could be and then the pro will just they'll putt to that marker and yeah just I'm try to get a feel for where the ball's going to roll what it's yeah. going to do when it reacts some will chip from different areas just to see what the bounce is going to be like that was interesting where, where we saw two or three of the players probably have four or five attempts at the same shot yeah. Diff slightly different angles, slightly different positions to see where they're going to roll down to, how are you going to roll. Just to see if you're firing it in low, whether it's going to bounce and skip yeah. or whether it's, it's going to It's that attention to detail roll. they're working on, but just that possibility, yeah. that, and it is a bloody possibility, that that ball would end up there on the day. They'll, they'll have an idea in their head. If they've missed, if they've missed the fairway a certain side, they'll know where they want to be if they have to bail out. So they'll have an area in their head. That's the best place to miss it. That's the best place for me to play the next shot from. They're My, always sort of planning ahead. My initial thought process was that if you went on the practice day, one, it would be more laid back. Yes, it was. Which it was, yeah. yeah. Um, but two, you might be a bit more approachable to the players. Don't know about that, because there's still quite a fair distance yeah. away. And strangely enough, when we played, when we watched on the championship day, we got incredibly close to some players, because just because of where we were on certain yeah. tees and greens. Yeah, you can be um, certain If you found the right spot, you were, you were right next to Phil Nicholson. Yeah, so you brush your shoulders with it. We found clubs. a nice little, little spot. Fourth green, fifth tee. Fourth one, but yeah. Fourth yeah, fourth fifth. green, fifth tee. And you can walk, we watched Phil Mickelson, Colin Morikawa, I think it was. Yeah. They finished their hole and then we watched them tee off on the next. And you are literally front row. Front row. Yeah, you're, you're there. You're absolutely very close. So it's kind of a bit of a fallacy that you think that on the practice day you, it's, people are a bit more approachable. Well, they probably are. Um, but it didn't really know it. I think that they're makes, slightly yeah. more relaxed because it's you know, they're not in the heat. It, the it was funny. I mean, we went we went on the seventeenth. I mean, everyone all goes on the seventeenth down at Hoy Lake because it's yeah. that hole. It's they're, they're crazy new, part of the hole. Three. Um, controversial hole. A but controversial but hole, but you know it's super tough. Um, and we did, although we didn't go on the stand, we were kind of nearby the tee. Yeah. And on the practice screen, on the, on the practice day. Uh, Justin Rose, I don't know who else failed it, but there was a few of them that they just hit the top of the slope and then we watched it roll down yeah. and down and down into into a huge coffin bunker which we would never get out of in a million years. And the crowd were going, ooh, and they're all like laughing and, and they're cheering when it goes, it's a, it's a bad shot. Yeah. I'd, I would love to know if they did it on the Championship no. Day. I didn't get round right to the 70th to find out. But I can right imagine on the, on, the, on the actual day they'd have gone, yeah, it's very that, polite. That bunker okay. in front of that green that they were rolling into, it must have been a seven foot lip and then another probably. Well, I think we saw Justin Rose climb into it, didn't we? And yeah. it disappeared completely. So you look at a 16 foot of elevation to get yeah. up to the green. So I, I like the practice day, and so it's very much laid back. Um, I actually like the spectators. I thought some of them might be a bit over the top or a bit yeah. too. Well, in your face, let's say. Well, all were... like-minded people, as such, you know, we're yeah. all there to watch watch the golf. And uh, some there may have a slightly more um, liquid fuel time than others. <laughs> we had a few um, of those, yeah. But you know, you're all there for one thing, aren't you? I think we we, we said when we came out of it, if you you 
you're either inspired to want to play and go and play golf straight away, yeah. or it's like I've had too much, um, yeah. and it's one or the other. Well, he's in the, the little minibus going from the camping to back to the car um, earlier, and there were three guys from Northern Ireland there, and they're, they're looking at the time of their flight, and they're literally he's going. We can go. We can play nine holes when we get back. We yeah, can go and play yeah, nine yeah. holes. I mean, it's, I want to go and play. That that's all I want to do. Yeah. And it does. It gives you that sort of like, oh, the golf. I want to play golf. I just want to hit yeah. a golf ball. Yeah, I'm, I fully stayed. I've always said, no matter how young or fit I am, or how good I did, I would never have got in golf if I started years ago. I was never going to be as good as they play as what we saw. And yet, they didn't all do as well as I expected to. No. And the reason for that, and people sometimes say this, is because the TV only show you the top 10% of all those players that are playing, and normally all the best shots that they've hit. Yeah. So, well, how many players have we got? 150, something yeah. like that, wasn't it? Roughly yeah, about 150. They were going out in threes. We saw a lot more real life golf on the practice day and the championship day than you would probably see yeah. on TV. Yeah, we saw some ugly shots. Yeah. But then we also saw some really good ones as well. But there was also some distinctly average ones. There was, there was, one, there was some where just like us, we'd be in a bit of rough and we go, we're going to be a bit, we're going to be a bit too cheeky here and we try and do too much and they hit the top of a little bunker and it rolls back in it. Stuff where we all do the same mistakes. I mean, so for example now, some people say, we can just watch it at home. We can sit, in, sit on yeah. the sofa, make a beer, have a cup of tea, watch it from home. But it is different watching it. It is different, it, and there's nothing wrong with watching it at home because watching it at home is a, is a different experience whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I've always said the thing about going to watch live sport is is the people, is the atmosphere. And, it is. Yeah, and it, I didn't know if I'd get that at the golf. I thought I would at the Ryder Cup because that's the kind of crazy atmosphere you get if you win a football match, it's that kind of thing. And although it was quite subdued on championship, on the actual championship day, there was still an element of the fun going on in it. There was still, oh, yeah. you still see some people dressed up. And, Crazy stuff, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's um, a guy walking around a dinosaur onesie, yeah. and there's all sorts of matching uh, uniforms, uh, kits. Um, so, it, it's very much a different animal. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, when you watch the Sky Sports stuff or any sports channel, you get a condensed view of golf. You do. A condensed view of professional golf. And I, I said to you, 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 when you're there watching it live, you're watching it in 3D because you can see the terrain, you can see the hills. There's that, certain, that's certain, a, that's part, there's there's certain well, parts yeah. of that course I didn't realise were quite so undulated and hilly. We walked them. I think it was the Boy. the twelfth. I didn't realise there's quite such a an incline to get up to the green. Yeah. TV you know. always flattens things yeah. in the same way that even on YouTube it always flattens things. Yeah. Cameras do. But you're nice. You can get up close and you can hear the conversations between caddy and player. Yeah, that's about nice. About what the wind's doing, what the lie's like, any sort of alterations they've got to make to be able to hit the shot and um, yeah that's that's really sort of an eye opener as to sort of the in, in depth they they think and talk about um, but for me I mean it's just the sound of them hitting the ball yeah. we've watched um, and I think it's one thing that I think struck me and impressed me the most and sort of really sort of made me think wow was uh, we watched Henrik Stenson hit a couple of shots right and I've got to say by far that is the most amazing sound I've ever heard. It's Henry Stenson in an eye. Just the sound of the contact yeah. and the fizz that he gets if that ball goes through the air. It's something that you don't really appreciate watching on TV. Again, microphones and stuff would definitely yeah. pick up the way you, you want it. You, want you see the ball flight. And That's why you like. You like getting near enough that you can watch ball flights. Yeah. Because you're, you're at that level where you want to see how a ball shape is done. It's just the way you see it. Say with, with Henry Stenson in an approach shot with an eye and how it fizzes off the face, the sound of it, and just watching how he's working that ball in a slight little draw, yeah, you know, keeping the flight down on it, it's it's what, it's amazing what? to watch. So you like you like watching the technical side of it, and that's fine. I like watching some of the crowd because some of the crowd are not there to watch the good shots. No, they are there to watch Chilad blow a wobbler or whatever. Yeah, yeah? they are they are there to see people make mistakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, that, and that's part of the fun as well because they are human after all yeah. hi everybody welcome back 
who knew how uh, the hot a GoPro would get when it's underneath a windscreen in the sunshine? I know. So we had a bit of a um, malfunction there due to overheating. So we're going to move quite quickly. A couple yeah. more things on the actual day. Yeah. So of course. I said one thing that you need to do is you've got to take a picture of that scoreboard. Yeah. So we ventured around to the 18th green and took a seat in the grandstand. We did. We're also back on the pink road again. I thought we got rid of the pink road. I thought we got rid of the pink road. Carry on. Uh, so we had a little look to go up into the grandstand and there was all blocked off there saying, oh, there's a big queue here, go around to the other side. Yeah. So we went around and every side had a, a big queue. Kind of big queue. Yeah. Now we thought, oh, I bet grandstand must be full, etc. Um, but it turns out they were just stopping people going up there because yeah, there were players on the green. So if I put that on the video before, it was just a miss. Yeah. There's basically there was players on the green, so they couldn't let us climb up and in there until they'd cleared. So we went up in the grandstand, and what a view that was. Yeah, amazing view. Probably one of the best views in the whole place, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. So you've got the massive yellow um, scoreboard up there, the traditional Open Championship scoreboard, which you know is so iconic. You've got to get a photo of it. Super, super tough hole to finish. Yeah. And uh, we saw some people um, do well and not so well. Yeah, quite a mixed bag, really. Uh, um, yeah. We, the interesting one to say was how certain fans just love certain people. Like, we watched um, Tommy Fleetwood come in. Yeah. Admittedly, one, it was Tommy Fleetwood up north. Um, and two, so, he was leading the tournament at the time. Yeah. Um, but when he his group finished, about half that. Yeah, the area all, emptied. They all up and left. Yeah, they all went and left. And there were some really good people coming yeah. behind them. It wasn't like there were relatively unknown ones coming behind. No, the nice thing about that hole is you look up at the scoreboard and it tells you what group is on the hole now. Yeah. And then it'll tell you underneath or above because um, they alternate it to make it quick and easy who's coming behind. Who's coming behind, yeah. So it's like, oh, oh, they're coming in, they're coming in. I think we watched um, Adam Scott come in after his little um, hook tee shot onto a fan's yeah. head. Um, we saw, what else did we see? Well, we saw Try Ricky quick, Fowler, we actually. Saw, yes. Yeah, we, we saw um, Ricky Fowler go from two under to go to one over yeah, it was, on um, that hole. Two out of bounds. Yeah, I was believe, looking was back amazing. and um, I saw him hit one ball and then he was there and he, a couple of minutes later after everyone else had played, he played the second ball. Then look again, and he's playing the third. Yeah, which went on the green lovely actually. Uh, which was a good shot. I think it was yeah. out to the back edge of the green. Um, but yeah, he turned out to have uh, two balls out of bounds there on the right hand side, which internal out of bounds in the middle of a hole in the middle of yeah, the Yeah, I think it's an unusual different. thing for us, for most people to understand about internal out of bounds. We, we yeah. see them quite often because some more courts are quite narrow. Normally, the 18th hole at most of the, the open venues, there, there is no internal out of bounds on the 18th hole. Yeah. You, you play in between the stand, so to speak. So you, you kind could, of caught people out. Yeah, so you could be up against the stand. The wind was swirling about a little bit. It was slightly downwind, um, but it must have just caught him off guard. And yeah, put two balls out of bounds there. Um, I would also say that one thing, it wasn't a disappointment, it was reality. Yeah. Um, we watched a lot of players, including um, a lot of players on the, on the practice one as well, day as well. Not many of them got in relatively long putts in one. No. You're talking 15 feet longer. They, they just didn't. No. I think Mickelson, we saw one, we actually videoed it on the practice. Yeah, Phil did a, a good part of one of the holes, it was the third hole we was watching. But that was it. Um, Everyone else was close. Yeah. Those so that, that's from what we saw, we didn't really see what else was going about on the course. Yeah. I know but again, Rory, Sky Sports would have shown you all the yeah. ones that went in. So. Rory hold a monster on one of the holes. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I think we watched um, Padraig Harrington come through, we saw yeah. Shane Lowry come in. Yeah, we saw what to do, yeah. As well. Was it Adam Scott, Ricky Fowler? Um, the other thing is, we were baking on the uh, 18 on that grandstand. Yes. But the good thing is, um, partially supported by the Melanoma Fund, who um, I'm quite closely linked to now, there are there were air, there are units all over different all the different grandstands and different parts of the areas where you could get free um, strong high SPF factor 30, factor 15, yeah. um, sun cream, and many people were using it, all for free. There was also um, places where you could just get yourself, if you had a reusable bottle for water, free bottle, free water everywhere yeah. across the course, and on the um, practice area, and also in the camping village. So there's lots of free stuff going on as well. So sort of taking safety into it safety as well, into so the they're keeping health. you protected from the sun. We 
keeping you hydrated in the heat as well. Yeah. Um, lastly, on the main main course structure, I forgot about this one. Sorry, everybody. The PGA Pros. Yes. Yeah. The swing zone. Yeah. The swing zone. Three 15-minute lessons. Thousands of lessons over the, over all the days they're yeah. doing. Uh, we met some lovely guys. We already knew some of them, including Jamie Cocker, who we know very locally. Neil Williams. Um, so many other ones that we know there. Yeah. Uh, it was great to see. Great to see so many children. So many. Well, just people from all walks of life getting a lesson. Yeah, I think, I think they opened yeah. or they started at I think it was half eight, something like that. And they're literally fully booked until was it seven. Every day is fully booked. Yeah. So again, another freebie you can you can take part in. So very quickly then, before it's overheats, let's go to the camping. The camping. Now, for me, that was a brilliant experience. Yeah, it was. It was a brilliant experience. Um, my body and the state I look now is probably telling me it wasn't a brilliant experience because I'm a bit old for camping on a flat piece of earth. But you know, it's fine. Well, we were there. I think we were sat there yesterday evening towards the end, and we sort of put the rods to rights, and we could quite easily have booked a B and B or a travel lodge type place. But it wouldn't have been anywhere near the place. But yeah, you'd have had to worry about getting to the venue by taxi or by yeah. bus, uh, where you was going to park your car. We had parking permits, we parked in one of the park and ride car parks. Yeah. They ferry us to the camping village. Very yeah. efficient again. Um, the, the village was a quarter of a mile from the actual entrance of the place, if that. Yeah, it was quite a, um, a, a short Dead easy, walk. we had our own kind of pathway to get to the main entrance, literally. Um, excellent. Foot Joy yeah. were doing the main sponsorship for it this year. We got yeah. free hats. We got free hats. Only because we asked for them, so it's yeah. not like we're, we're you know, give away. They were, were fitting people with their new <coughs> technology of shoe fitting. Yeah, they had a lovely um, new fit lab, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah, I think um, when I used it, there was less than 100 people who'd been on it, and that includes like, the majority of the tour players haven't even had it done yet. So um, that, that was great, another opportunity to try something new. Exactly. Hopefully, we'll go do a video of that system at some point in the future. But the, the way it was organised was absolutely fantastic. You had, you had full shower units, toilet facilities the free water as well. Hot water um, all time through the showers, honestly, hot water. Even yeah. at two o'clock in the morning when I went by at one point. Yeah. Scolding hot at yeah. two o'clock in the morning, by the way. We've also had um, many different caterers there doing different bits and pieces. We tried a few. We tried a few of them. Um, all good. Yeah. Not one yeah, bad one, all exceptionally good. And everyone spoke highly of all, all of them, really. Um, Not always the cheapest, but then it's no, where you are, but it's quality as well, and the quality quality, counted, yeah. really good quality stuff. The quality did count around against the price yeah. on some of it. Um, but you had the main tent there, which had some, yeah, it was full of benches inside, a bar area, um, and they had a lot of entertainment there in the evening. Yeah, they had the first, uh, interviews with some of the players, yeah, the first some evening, influencers. The first evening we were there, the No Laying Up guys um, were there doing interviews with Wyndham Clark. Yeah. Who's the US Open Championship? The US Open Champion, I believe. Um, and then I think they had bands there playing on, well, on, what it, on days, Wednesday, I think. Wednesday night. Yeah. They had um, Nick Doherty with his podcast. Yeah. He was there talking with Andrew Coltart about life, universe, golf, everything. Um, and yeah, they really do put on a good, good time with yeah. that by all, wouldn't yeah. they? I did feel sorry for the for the gentleman yesterday about doing all the music because he was bowing out some great songs all by himself because yeah. everyone was watching the screen and said, Yeah, that's it. Unfortunately for him, Rory was going round and yeah, telling Rory was coming into the final stretches, so. Uh, so he paid a good hour to nobody because yeah. they were all watching the screens in the same area as him playing. But hey, afterwards they celebrated with him, yeah. so it was all right. But no, I think, you know, massive. Well yeah. done to the guys who Yeah, the massive guys thumbs up to so, whoever organised yeah. the village, whether it be. Foot Joy as part of the, of the main sponsors or other people to do with the Open or already setting up in the first place. Absolute thumbs up. And I said to John, if, if I was to go again to another Open, I'd definitely do it again. Yeah, definitely do, do the campaign. I know it's a bit hard on my body at my age, but it's just, it's got so many benefits. Yeah. So many benefits for it. So you, you're there, you're by the course, you can walk in, and even if part way through the day you want to come back, have a night to eat, have a sit down, yeah, chill. Yeah, rest. You've got, you've got a base to do so. You can get a wristband. Yeah, wristbands, and then, yeah. Um, Follow doing a festival. Come back to the tent and go back in and watch the golf later on in the day. Yeah, um, makes for a very relaxed the other, time. The other thing that is fun is, I think we was there around about the opening tee shot time on Thursday, um, when it was the local, like Jordan, Jordan Clark, is it? I can't remember his name. Yeah, um, okay. But you heard them announce him and the Raw 
at that time of the morning. In the morning yeah, yeah. The roar yeah. for him on the first tee was absolutely amazing. Nearly went me up. Nearly yeah. did. Um, I was already by half four, don't worry. And I think, I can't remember what time we got to the actual tournament on the, the practice day, but you could, no, sorry, on the tournament day, but you could hear the roars already, you know, birdie roars going around. Yeah. The yeah. Fantastic. You felt like you're part of it, even though you're on the village, you still felt like you're yeah. a part of the whole thing. You could still on. hear it going on. Yeah. You're, you're that close. So, anything else to say very quickly? No, just just a fantastic time. I just say, do it. Um, by the time this goes out, unfortunately, you probably would have missed the date for trying to get tickets for Troon, because the way they do this is literally, you have to apply to go in the draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that'll be done, well, that'll be done in a few months' time, but to get in the draw, it runs out in a couple of days' time when we're filming this. Um, obviously, Troon's a lot longer for me, so it's, it's, for next year's time, I won't be applying. But, yeah, I think as a fairness thing, they ballot it. And, um... Yeah, it's a ballot. But... But yeah, when, they, when they come out every year, if you see one that you want to go to, go in for the ballot, get your tickets, as soon as you've got your tickets, as soon as you know you've got your tickets, they will start telling you when they're going to open the camping village. Once they open the camping village, get in their first day and get your stuff booked in. Yeah. Again, massively efficient how they organised it, went in, give you a card, so they told you where your, your tents were, all done. Top, top's a good one. Yeah. Just do it, just do it and enjoy the whole, experience because we certainly did we're going home and having a rest but um Much it, easy. it's well deserved honestly and we had a great time congratulations to who's ever won i don't know who's going to be yet um but hey could be your pick could be my pick you never know we'll pick. see yeah I, I can't tell you what i, who I pick but I'm, I've got a, i'm in a draw to try and win a driver if one wins but we'll see Bye everybody, please subscribe, please hit the notification bell, come and do all those things, come and join me on Big Ollie Golf, my wife and I on Big Ollie World, and uh, we're off playing golf very soon as part of the Cornish Pest. Yeah, we're going to get another one in. the background right now, okay? But if you get a chance to go to the Open, just do it, even if it's once in your life, just do it. You won't Bye, regret it. You won't regret it. Bye.